Now, a warning, our next report may bring tears to your eyes, if you're a politician, that is. The London mayoral candidate, Ken Livingstone, is the latest to come over all emotional as he attended the first public airing of his campaign video. He claimed the clip reminded him of the weight of responsibility he hopes to assume if he gets to run the capital. But is it such a bad thing for a politician to be visibly moved? As his own election broadcast reached a climax, Ken Livingstone was clearly overcome. And as he wiped away his tears, his leader, Ed Miliband, looked like he was welling up too. Today in British politics, it's almost cool to cry. Nick Clegg claims he regularly has a little sob while listening to music. And Ed Balls would have us believe that Antiques Roadshow moves him to tears. So when did emotions in politics become so public? Well, it's by no means a new phenomenon. Sir Winston Churchill cried in public, but mainly about tragic events rather than himself. Margaret Thatcher's iron resolve famously wobbled on leaving Downing Street. Ladies and gentlemen, we're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years. But then the iron lady's composure almost broke. Watch her face as she reaches her car. And it said that trickle became a flood as soon as she was out of sight of the cameras. It was too late to change the fate of her political career. But Ed Muskie's presidential ambitions were shattered in 1972 after he made an impassioned response to public criticisms of his wife. But it's fortunate for him he's not on this platform beside me. He later said his tears were just melting snowflakes. Politicians now, though, don't feel the need to cover up their emotions. In fact, crying may even have become a useful tool to boost their popularity. Former Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke liked to characterise himself as Australia's mate. He wept several times in public over personal tragedies like his daughter's drug addiction and his own unfaithfulness. Like any father, I, I love my daughter. I trust her. And she was completely exonerated by the processes of the law. And for Hillary Clinton, shedding a tear after losing the Iowa primary to Barack Obama in 2008 played very well with voters, particularly women. You know, I have so many opportunities from this country. I just don't want to see us fall backwards. You know, so. No one's told well, President well, Putin, well, though, that crying doesn't make you any less of a man. After being re-elected last month, he fervently denied he'd cried saying it was just the wind in his eyes. Well, joining me from Leeds is the political psychologist, Dr Peter Bull, who wrote the microanalysis of political communication. And here in the studio is the political commentator and president of the pollsters, YouGov, Peter Kellner. Uh, Peter Bull, what's happened to the British stiff upper lip? Why is it starting to wobble? Um, well, I think there's a general change in social attitudes, so it's become more acceptable for uh, people um, uh, as, as a whole to show their emotions more freely. Um, so it's part of a major so social change. But um, um, I think you need to remember that um, there's, there's nothing new about politicians weeping. And if you go right back to ancient Rome, uh, Cicero actually recommended um, uh, weeping in oratory as part of the practice of oratory. And uh, in the 19th century, Lincoln wept during his celebrated debates about slavery with Douglas. So but there's nothing new. When you say there's been a social change, though, is it that politicians were kind of ahead of the times? Uh, no, I don't think they're ahead of the time. They're probably reflecting that social change rather than leading it. But they've been doing it for years. Yes, I think th they might be seen as a, um, a shift maybe in, in about the 1980s when if, um, if, if you go back to... I mean, Ed Muskie in 1972 in his presidential campaign got a huge amount of negative press. Um, for for he was the press accused him of, of breaking down in tears and it was seen as a very it effectively sort of wrote off his presidential campaign whereas maybe by the 80s you have um, I mean, Ronald Reagan as president was certainly known to shed a tear or two and with Bill Clinton it becomes much more apparent so maybe there has been a shift uh, well, over the last uh, 20 30 years well Peter Keller does crying in public make politicians more popular is it a sign of humanity or weakness it depends on whether it's genuine or not. So you think, I think what happened in the Ed Muskie era, 40 years ago, you know, Cicero, Lincoln, Churchill, they never had television. 
And when television started covering politics in the, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, then you had that sort of the mad men idea the, you know, from the series that, that men, they, they drank, they smoked, they patronised women, and they never, ever cried. And Muskie was caught in that era. And since then, it, it, it's, I think, got a lot more human. And the two recent cases, Gordon Brown, three months before the last general election, uh, he came close to crying when talking about the death of his daughter Jennifer, or President Obama during his campaign talking about the death of his grandmother. These were seen to be genuine. But that was fine. Quite, people were quite cynical about the Gordon Brown moment, though, weren't they? Uh, many people were, but, but our YouGov figures showed that his reputation did pick up. His ratings picked up in the, in the days afterwards and lasted, you know, a couple of weeks. Whether or not it's genuine, there's a famous case, Bill Clinton, mid-90s. He went to the funeral of a former cabinet minister, a man called Ron Brown, and he was seen chatting away quite happily. Then he realised the cameras were on him. And then suddenly, his face changed. He put his hands to his eye and appeared to wipe away a tear. He knew that when the public were on him, he needed to show grief. And Clinton was brilliant at, at, at faking authenticity. It's what the public sees as authentic is what matters. Is it easier, though, for male politicians to cry than for women? Do women get criticised for it, do you think? Um, I mean, Hillary Clinton, the voters liked but it. They but they liked generally... it. I'm not sure these days, it may have been different 20 or 30 years ago, these days, it's... You know, when a politician cries, I think voters instinctively ask themselves two questions. Is this real or is it fake? And if they, decide, if they decide it's fake, it's no good. If they decide it's real, does this show humanity or weakness? So if, it, if the public think it's real and it's a sign of humanity, then it works. If they think either that it's fake or that it's a sign of weakness, the public don't like it. So when Nick Clegg uh, said that he cried to music and Ed Balls talked about the Antiques Roadshow rather implausibly, do you think people saw that as fake or, or genuine? I don't think that makes much difference. Talking about crying, you know, is a pretty futile exercise. Uh, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to walk the walk, not, or you've got to cry the cry, not just talk about it. Um, so I don't think talking about it does any good. You, it's, it's like courage. It's not something you can pretend or, or, or prepare for or talk about. It's got to be spontaneous, it's got to be real, it's got to be of that moment. That's when it has the effect. Peter Cannell, thank you very much. And Peter Bull as well, I'm afraid we lost contact with him at some point there. Matt.